video by Peter Draws, sponsored by Skillshare, watched by the world's best viewers. As you can see from the intro, this pen is very beautiful, and I'm using it today to do a total of two drawings, except the first drawing is split up into two half drawings. That is to say, I started two drawings that I didn't like how they were going, and so I abandoned them partway through, and then, finally, on my third try, I got into something that I really enjoyed and I, and I liked how it was going. And so I finished the drawing. And that's sometimes how it works. It's okay if it doesn't work out the first time and you want to, if you spend a few minutes on a piece of paper drawing stuff, or a few hours, it doesn't matter. You don't have to commit yourself to a drawing and keep working on it. If you don't enjoy it anymore just because you've spent some time and effort on it, it's better to stop and start over and spend time on something you're enjoying and don't guilt yourself into working on stuff just because you think you should for some reason. I mean, why should you? I think you should draw stuff you enjoy. So I was drawing and as soon as I stopped enjoying it, I stopped because I could. And then I restarted something else. Now I got the idea to use one of these glass dip pens again this is actually a pen that's been featured already in a previous video uh, where I unboxed it and stuff. I got this pen from a guy called Fire Spider Glass who hand makes these, you know, he'd say, uh, I guess I, you call them a glass blower, even though I don't know if you really blow the glass pens. I'm not sure how it all works, but it's pretty cool. It's all handmade and there's like a little jellyfish in the end of the pen and it's all, it's beautiful. It's I try to show you in the video a little bit, but it's so much better in person. And uh, I got into the mood to do this again with a dip pen because in a previous video recently, you saw that I used another kind of dip pen with a metal nib, right? So then I wanted to try and go back to the glass nib uh, to see how it felt different. And it feels really good. Here, I did something I didn't do much of before, which is start sketching a lot faster and looser and recklessly with the glass nib, because before I was very afraid of breaking the glass nib. And I have broken, um, I've broken three glass pens, but only one of them was because I was pressing too hard. Uh, I even dropped this one in the middle of the drawing onto the desk. I only dropped it about maybe nine inches and it didn't break. And this one I was just scribbling away I, I guess I've kind of gotten more used, used to it, more comfortable with the pen, and it, I'm not afraid of breaking the tip anymore. And it was just fun to scribble away. And it holds a lot of ink. It feels good. It's not frustrating. I don't know. I really like the glass nib drawing. I like the way it feels on the paper. Of course, it doesn't flex at all, like the metal nibs. Oh, I guess maybe it flexes a little bit, like maybe if you had some super extremely precise way of measuring it, like maybe it flexes one or two micrometers or something, uh, but n nothing I could notice without specialized tools, nothing I could see with my naked eye. But by the time I got into that third sketch there, I was having a great time. I got into the zone. I was just scribbling away. Uh, it was amazing. It was one of those fast ones. By the way, if you want to learn a little bit more about illustration or drawing or any of your other creative endeavors, or if you just want to find some 
inspiration, motivation, or instruction, then Skillshare is probably a great resource for you. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can sign up with the link in the description and get a two-month free trial. Even then, an annual subscription is less than $10 a month, which is incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. So check out some of the incredible options they've got for you there when it comes to things like color master classes, simple steps to creating vivid art, or the Drawing on Everything class by Chantelle Martin. Hey, I saw her in a Casey Neistat video once. Anyways, check out the free trial, see if they have something useful for you. Getting back to this drawing, I will tell you that I was drawing on a piece of cardstock, which I just bought a big pack of, like the printer paper comes in for some project I was doing for school, but I didn't end up using any of it. And one time I bought a pack of Bristol that says, that said it had two distinct sides, which I thought was interesting because all paper does. But then this stuff I really noticed really does have two distinct sides and that one side is smooth and one side is rough. And I really didn't know which side I should use to draw on. I ended up using the smooth side. But now I'm wondering, maybe it would have been even more satisfying to use the, the rough earth. I mean, the, even the rough side is not that rough. But if I had used the rough side and I enjoy the feeling of the glass nib going across the surface of the paper, maybe that would have been even more satisfying to feel it bumping along the little, the textures of the rough side, right? Anyways, maybe I'll keep it in mind for next time. Try the rough side. I mean, I don't know why I'm thinking about it so much. I could just pull out another piece of paper. It's like a 400 pack and just try it out. Even with without ink, I could just drag the tip of the pen across the paper. And because that's a lot, like I've said before, that's one of the things that really keeps me going is I just like the feeling of the pen on the paper. I don't know. Is that, is there something like weird? Is that like a weird thing I have? Like it's deeply ingrained in my brain that came from some early childhood trauma or some experience I had that I, I don't know. I'm like right now I have a toothpick in my hand and I'm dragging across the surface of the desk. I'm kind of scribbling with it. I, that's good for me too. Some, some, the, some sort of tactile response, right? The kinetic, I don't know. It's definitely good for me. Maybe that's why I also enjoy, enjoy drawing with my eyes closed. But even when you draw with your eyes closed, it's almost the same as drawing with your eyes open because you can see it in your head, even if it's not accurate. It's still there. I don't know. I'm just kind of, I'm trying to fish around, see what it is that I really, truly like about drawing. If I could boil it down, right? Maybe it's the feeling of the pen. Maybe it's the feeling of creating something. Maybe it's the drawing lines. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it could be multiple things, but if it was one thing, what would it be? I don't know. What would it be for you? If it was drawing, if you're, if you're like drawing, if it was painting, what would it be? If you had to boil it down to like one essential, simple thing, you like squishing colors around with the paint or you like rendering something, you like seeing something and then putting it on the canvas in a slightly different way. I don't know. Maybe you like evoking emotions. I can't, I can't think the same way you think. I don't know what's in your head. Okay, I gotta go now. Uh, I think the, like my internet upload speed has been slow lately and so I have a cable guy coming over. I don't know what in the world that they can do here in person that they can't do from there at the cable office, uh, you know, to like speed up my upload speed. Do they, do they come clean out like the clogs in my cable line that's slowing everything down? Do they have like a, you know how plumbers have those snakes for the pipes? Do, do they have one of those for the cable line? I don't know. We just have to filter everything. I don't know. Okay, okay, I'm going to go. Uh, all right, goodbye, everyone. Have a good day. All right, goodbye.